These charts tell us a lot about Vietnam's economy. Its economic growth of 6 to 7% rivals China, and its exports are worth as much as the total value of its GDP. The nation was crippled by poverty, and per capita income was stuck between $200 to $300 by the mid 1980s. Vietnam's transformation from a poverty stricken economy to one of the fastest growing economy commenced in 1986, when the government launched Doi Moi. It's a series of political and economic reforms aimed at strengthening the private sector's role and opening the country to foreign investors. Under this initiative, Vietnam's GDP per capita increased 12 times between 1985 and 2023, reaching over 3,700 US dollars. This dismantled the largely planned closed economy and opened it to the international markets and trade and initiated pro-business reforms. It was accompanied by a wide-ranging social agenda, with a clear goal of leaving no one behind. Since 70% of Vietnamese worked in the fields, the agricultural collectives were abolished, and the land was distributed among small farmers with 20-year leases. At the same time, price controls on agricultural goods were removed, as farmers and industrial producers were allowed to sell their goods at a profit. As a result of these changes, the Gini coefficient started rising, due to which more changes were made. Within less than two decades, after being a chronic rice importer, the country re-emerged as one of the world's largest rice exporters, with exports averaging 3 to 4 million tons a year. The next step was the establishment of private businesses by scaling down of inefficient government monopolies and opening small service industries to individuals and families. This brought inflation down to single digits within one decade of following the policy. By the late 1990s, more than 30,000 private businesses had been created, and the economy was growing at an annual rate of more than 7%. This made poverty decline from about 50% to 29% of the population. Rapid job creation and rising wages in manufacturing and services has pulled an expanding share of Vietnam's workforce away from agricultural production, and virtually all new jobs were created in industries and services. By 2017, share of the labor force in agriculture reduced to 40%, while in services it was increased by 34%. Similar to many low-income economies, illiteracy was a widespread issue, and by late 1990 education expenditure was about 15% of total public spending, and was subsequently increased to 20% of annual GG budget expenditure. Public education expenditure as a ratio to GDP has consequently increased from 3.5% in 2000 to 6% in 2050, with state budget being the main funding source. Public education spending was first used for investing into schooling institutions and primary school teachers. Vietnam's situation was helped as the school age population began to stabilize, meaning more resources could be spent on fewer children and the student-teacher ratio fell from 35 in 1995 to 20 in 2010. With education, electricity has been one of Vietnam's priorities from the start. Power losses in transmission and distribution are close to international standards, and collection rates from consumers are almost 100%. Rural household electrification increased from below 50% in 1990 to almost 100% today. By early 2018, 99.9% .9 of communes and 99% of rural households were connected to the grid. Vietnam has achieved MDG5 and improvements in the health sector. The maternal mortality rate declined by 75% between 1990 and 2050. Immunization was brought close to 100% a few years following Doi Moi. Some 73% of Vietnam's population has access to essential health services, and health insurance coverage was 87% in 2018. Until today, the government subsidizes 100% of premiums for the very poor, ethnic minority children and children under 6 years of age. While the policy was not targeted only at the poor, it gave large parts of the population access to health care. As a result, immunization of children increased to 90% already by 1990, in which 90% of births are attended by a skilled health worker. Infrastructure investment has been a priority for decades, with road infrastructure receiving the majority of donor funding. Early heavy investment into trunk infrastructure played a large role in creating new business opportunities and promoting income diversification and off-farm employment. However, there are still challenges that Vietnam must overcome to sustain its economic growth and development. With continued efforts to address its challenge, Vietnam is well positioned to achieve even greater success in the years to come.